my name is Carrie Crutch. I'm an assistant professor in the Division of Biokinesiology and Physical Therapy at USC. Um, and today, my colleagues and I are going to talk about how to apply to our PhD program in biokinesiology. So what you've likely already done, um, but really what is the first step to putting together a graduate school application is to determine why you want to do a PhD. Um, so uh, ideally, this is because you are interested in pursuing a career in research. Um, there are several different types of careers um, in research that um, include research in academic settings, um, but also research careers in government, in nonprofits, or in industry. Um, another first step for putting together your application is to identify potential programs to apply to um, and potential mentors or graduate advisors for your program. So how do you identify potential mentors? Um, there's a couple different strategies. So one might be to um, pull out uh, research articles that you've read and identify who are the senior authors of those papers. Um, you can also search for faculty by a topic or um, area that you are interested in pursuing. Um, and you can also ask your own professors or mentors to re recommend um, other potential graduate programs or mentors. We recommend uh, starting to prepare your application at least two months prior to the deadline. Um, but of course, uh, starting earlier is always better. Um, and here are the kind of uh, steps that you're going to need to go through, again, at least two months prior to the deadline. So first, you're going to update your CV or resume. You're going to reach out to potential mentors. You're going to put together a personal statement and then um, request feedback from any mentors that you currently have on your personal statement. You'll identify three potential people to write recommendation letters for your application. Um, and then you will also request your official transcripts from your any schools that you have attended to be sent to the program that you're applying to. Um, so we will, we will go into a little bit more depth on each of these topics. Um, and just one more note about requesting the official transcripts. Um, this can take some time and it varies between, um, between institutions, so we recommend at least starting this process at least two months prior to the deadline. So here are some important dates in our own application process. So our uh, applications are due November 1st. Um, our interviews are held in January. Um, in February, we will notify accepted students of the um, of the decision on their application. And then April 1st is the deadline for those students to let us know if they accept the position in our department. Hi, I'm Lori Mishner, and I am a professor, clinical scholar in the Division of Biokinesiology and Physical Therapy. So happy to have you here listening to tips for applying. I'm gonna talk about uh, creating and crafting a CV. Most important on the CV, spending time, making sure you clearly articulate your research experience. Indicate your role in the lab, what lab you were in, and briefly, what did you do in the lab that you worked in? And if you have multiple labs, please put them each individually. Also on your CV, technical skills. We'd like to understand what equipment or soft and software processing applications that you've worked with. Indicating also the level of proficiency is very helpful. For example, you have experience with MATLAB, but you consider yourself a beginner for that type of software. Be sure to include presentations and publications with a full citation, not just the name of the article, but all authors name of the article and where it was published with details. Include clinical training and experience if that's relevant. Also should include some non-research, non-clinical positions, employments, volunteer leadership things that really will speak to your skills of what you've done in those positions that may help to fully explain your relevant experience. So how to communicate with a potential advisor. And first, I'd like to start with in an email what to include. It's really important when you send an email that I'll start with the last point and remind you of this. Not too long. You want to describe your research interests and why you want to do a PhD. 
explain the particular lab that you're interested or why the particular lab that you've contacted the, the lab director for. And you should know what the lab is working on currently so you can articulate some of that in your email. Attach your CV that you've prior completed and then ask if they're opening to meeting prior to the application date. And again, don't make it too long and attach that CV. If you have a meeting with your potential advisor before the application deadline, you should talk about your research experience. Explain the content of your work that you've done. What was your position in the lab? What did you do? And now you've had that on your CV, further explaining what's the kind of question or questions that you were involved with asking and answering. Why is that question important? How does that feel, fill, fill a potential gap in the literature? What did you do in particular? How did you contribute to the project? And also what were your findings and what's the implications of those? Ask questions about the lab and program and ask if it's okay to reach out to a current PhD or PhD students in the lab to talk about what's current in the lab and their experiences in the lab. Hi, my name is James Finley and I'm an associate professor here in the Division of Biokinesiology and Physical Therapy. And I'll be providing a few tips on how to write a strong statement of purpose, also known as a personal statement. So one of the first things you want to be able to elaborate on in these statements is uh, your professional goals. So what is it that you hope to do in the long term and how do you go about planning or uh, accomplishing these, these goals? As you describe your goals, it's going to be really important to um, explain how how and why applying to and potentially being um, admitted to our program is going to help you achieve those goals. So you want, you want to be very specific to features of our program that will help you in, in the long run. In addition, as you're writing your statement, you, you want to include information about any current or prior research that you've engaged in following some of the points that were previously described for um, what may happen if you have an individual meeting with a potential faculty mentor. Along those lines, you want to state and describe the, the faculty mentor who you might hope to work uh, work with or, or do your research with, why you want to work with that member, and then how working with that member will help um, accomplish your professional goals. And then finally, um, it's always good to potentially conclude with a statement about how um, your work and your efforts are going to contribute to either the field of physical therapy the field of movement science or, or both. So um, common questions about statements of purpose. The first is uh, how long should a statement of purpose be? So we generally see these statements in the, in the range of three to four pages. Um, and that's you know, providing you with sufficient space to be able to address the, the questions on the, the previous slide. When you're describing your prior uh, efforts, your prior research experiences, one of the really important things that you want to do is explain how those experiences have prepared you for a PhD. So it's in generally in general, you don't only want to describe what you did, but you really want to connect that um, those efforts to your your future goals. Similarly, um, and when you talk about your current research or your previous research experience, you want to think about explaining the content context of that work, your role and the outcomes of your efforts. So when identifying a faculty member who you are interested in working with, you want to be sure that you describe why you want to work with that particular person um, on that particular research topic. And you may even want to um, list or describe some potential research directions that you might pursue uh, during the PhD program. So this is an opportunity for you to really take some time to think about what you might do in the program and explain to the, the review committee or demonstrate to the review committee that you've really thought about um, the, the questions that you might answer as part of your PhD. And then finally, um, you always again want to tie in in your personal statement how both your past and your future actions are going to help you achieve your, your long-term professional goals. 
So lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about how to request letters of recommendation. Um, you might think that this is a part of your application that you don't have a lot of control over, uh, but you actually do. So the first tip is to be thoughtful about who it is that you are asking for letters from. Um, make sure to choose people who know you, um, people who have uh, personally seen you work, um, and especially those who have uh, who you've worked with in a research setting. Um, if you have a research advisor, someone whose lab you've been working in, um, or a co-author on a publication or presentation, um, you should definitely be asking those people for a letter. Um, and in fact, if you don't have a letter from those people, it will be really obvious to the admissions committee, um, and they'll wonder why not. Um, do not ask for letters um, from someone who's kind of at your own level, so your coworkers, fellow students. Um, the writer should ideally be someone who has um, supervised you in some capacity. I know we mentioned this before, but definitely request letters well in advance of the deadline. Um, we are all super busy and anyone you're going to be asking for a letter from is going to be super busy and want to plan ahead to make sure that they have time to write you um, a really strong letter. Um, if you ask someone for a letter and they uh, express some reluctance, um, I'm not sure I really know you that well, I don't know if I can write you a strong letter, I'm too busy right now, uh, the best thing to do is move on and find a different uh, letter writer. Um, because that that uh, what they're saying is uh, basically that they won't be able to give you a strong recommendation, and that's not something you want to include on your application. Um, and then provide the letter writer with enough information to write you a thorough and strong letter. So this means um, sending them your CV and perhaps even uh, part, parts of your application, like your personal statement. Um, the more information they have, the better um, the better they'll be, to, the better able they'll be to include, include uh, the most important details about your work in the letter. Um, and whether this is in the context of the personal statement or just your communication with your letter writer, um, make sure to remind them of specific things you accomplished in working with them when you were working with them. Um, and any personal details um, or any other information that might not be included in your resume or CV. So we hope that this information has been helpful, that we've answered questions you may have about the PhD process, and we encourage you to visit our website um, linked below for more information. And lastly, just uh, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon.